All this is now looking very rich. Yep. Now, this is a cute story, actually. So I really was torn with the first bottle to put into my cellar. I didn't know which one. I didn't have any good bottles at home. I had kind of like my daily drinkers at home. And I, FedEx shows up, and I get so excited because I think it's stained for the door, so my door is going to get stained before my party. And so I open up this box, and I pull it out, and it's a 2002 Penfolds Grange, which I don't know if you know Grange. is is not a cheap bottle of wine. And it was a gift from a customer in Australia to welcome my cellar home. Oh, that's nice. And so it came that day, and I thought, you know what? There's my first bottle. It does so look it, a little lonely. It does look a little lonely there, doesn't it? Exactly. And so I even sent him a photo, and, and what you're seeing is you're seeing white cards that basically are telling me, because I made an Excel spreadsheet that said this row is going to be for this wine, this type of wine, this type of wine. So I put it, it was the first bottle to enter my cellar, and it had the place to itself the entire first night. It's almost like an only child. Yeah, exactly. And I just love the fact that now when you look at all these photos, it's just sitting there by itself. And um, uh, this is another silly story that I have my wine cellar, I mean, my wine locker was cardboard wine tubes, custom-made cardboard wine tubes. So you'd open the locker, and there'd be rows and rows of cardboard tubes. So basically, I bought these moving boxes, and we were able just to take those tubes and put them in the moving boxes to move my wine home. Ah, I see. <laughs> So typically, where do, where do you source your wine? Uh, source is mainly a lot of lists. I'm on a lot of Cab and Syrah lists. So it's, it's when they come out with an offering, you know, I'll jump on it, especially for, the, you know, there's certain wineries that you don't want to miss an offering because they'll punt you off that list in a second. So May 5th, I believe, is, yeah, May 5th was the day all the wine showed up, and I didn't have room for all the boxes. So I literally got boxed into a corner. My contractor brought in all the boxes. We ran out of room, so I stayed in the corner, started shoving box, shoving bottles wherever I could fit them. And he goes, either you have to leave this room and you don't have access to the, to the racking, or I actually box you in. And so he boxed me in. So it took me about three hours to work my way out because I had to put wine. I just put it randomly and, until I could figure out where everything should go. So it took me nine, it took me nine hours. And wow. after nine hours, and if you look at if that photo, you'll see the little video camera I shoved in the racking. Um, but it took me nine hours to simply put the bottles in the correct location, but not categorize or not inventory where they're at. <laughs> so, and then it took me it took me easily a day and a half to actually because I'm very I'm very anal retentive with my organization. So I've I've marked every single section, every single space. I know where the bottle is. So, but for a party, it's fantastic. <laughs> so, do you have a particular plan as to how you're um, going to organize it? Oh, I already do. There's a wonderful website if you're not familiar with it called Seller Tracker, sellertracker.com. It's basically a web 2.0 way of organizing your wine. So uh, anyone could add a bottle. So if a, new, if a new vineyard comes out in a new bottle, I could go and I could add that bottle. When someone else buys that bottle, they can then find that bottle online and then they can add that bottle, add their purchase information. If it gets professional scores, they could then add that professional score information. Uh, then if it gets, um, for example, if I have a friend that drinks a bottle, they can then post their own personal review on it and it shows up on the page for that wine. And what's really neat about it, and this is a perfect example, so I have everything organized. So I know, like, you know, where the, where the Clopepe Pinot is. And someone said to me, Leslie, I'd love to try a Copain Syrah. And so I was able in Cellar Tracker to use my iPad and go, Syrah, Copain, which one, what, show me by drinking window. And it showed me by drinking window what copain was ready, where it was located in my cellar, and I was able to go straight to that bottle and pull that bottle out. So, so this is the area where it, it goes into the uh, closet area behind? Yeah, where, where, right where your mouse is, those two, those two rows that you see out of the three at the bottom, you uh, go straight back to the closet. The third one with the splits are actually against the wall that doesn't contain the closet. So the, that was important to me because I really didn't want, a lot of times people ask me, you should really put that closet in play. And to me, I thought it took away considerably from the aesthetic value of the seller. I just love the way it looks, and if we put that closet into play, I think it would have taken it away, which is why I really like the idea of the modular racking, because I still have a way of being able to get back there. 
Ah, now we're getting into party time. Now we're getting into the party, which which I I have a wonderful wonderful uh, cheese place near me, and their the boyfriend of one of the owners just moved back from Napa, where he was a sous chef, and he put together all the food, and they did all of the cheeses and meats and everything else. So I had forty people over. And we just went crazy. And it, it goes on. I have like three pages worth of photos here, but we just had a great time. And uh, if, you, uh, if you head over to, when you're done there, if you head over to the next page, so you'll see at one point, because, you know, I'll, I'll be very honest with you, I was a little tipsy. But um, <laughs> at one point, I was wondering, do we really have enough food? Because I kept seeing them. Usually they hang out near the wine, but they kept hanging out in the kitchen. And they were going crazy for this guy's food. I mean, they were just going gaga for it. And this was, he just did such a great job catering. And it was so much fun. He was in the kitchen the entire party. He was making all sorts of different things. Uh, it was so much fun. And these were lamb sliders. And you could see, if you look around, you could see all the other food out on the table or in my kitchen. But they, people could care less because anytime he brought something else that new, they wanted to try it. Love it. I love the way you finished there. Uh, on that it looks like he certainly had a good time what is this this is those are this was really cute um i do a cheese and wine offline at the cheese cave every three months it's only open to 12 of us and we always do a different theme and so the theme we have in july is going to be white wines beers and sticky wines is going to be the theme this the very first cheese cave we did they we were having so much fun they thought let's make an extra dessert so it is effie's oat cakes with creme fraiche and caramel and they just whipped it together at the last minute. And all of us loved it so much, we annihilated all of their inventory to put that together, which they had never put together before. And every time we go back and do another event, we still continue to annihilate all of their oat cakes, creme fraiche, and caramel. And anything else they serve, usually we just sell them out of it because they do such a good job putting things together. Wow. I love the way it ended in the party. I think you've done a great job with these pictures. And I think the seller looks absolutely beautiful. Nice one. Thank you. 